right, so I want to talk about some lessons from the book of Nahum. I'm thinking about going through some of these minor prophets because those books don't get preached out of a lot, and people don't think of them much. If they read them, it's usually because they're just doing their yearly Bible reading or their, their monthly or, or quarterly, whatever, how often they uh, read the Bible. They just go through it, but they don't really think about what they're reading and, and what lessons can be pulled from that and utilized. Now, it is a minor prophet, which means there is an element of prophecy there, but there's also some historical content. So there's there's really just a couple of truths that, that jump out at me from the book of Nahum, and I wanted to make a video about that. So first of all, Nahum is dealing with Nineveh. Now, if that sounds familiar, it's probably because Nineveh is also the place that Jonah went to. Jonah is one of the most popular characters in the Bible. Jonah is the man that was swallowed by the whale. Now what's interesting is that Jonah, when he was swallowed by the whale, he said he, that he, he cried out from hell. And I take that literally, that he cried out from hell. Which, when Jesus says that he's going to go down in the earth, as Jonah was in the belly of the fish... I believe that that connection means that Jesus also went to hell after the sacrifice on the cross. He pitched our sins in there, and then he came back out with the key. The book of Revelation talks about him having the key to the gate, and so he got out of the gates of hell because he had the key. So Jonah was a picture of that. But I think Jonah is also, if he's a picture of Christ, then he can also be a picture of Antichrist because he did ascend up out of the belly of the fish, where he was crying out from hell, and we know the Antichrist is going to ascend up out of the bottomless pit. So what does that have to do with Nahum? Well, Nahum deals with the same setting. It's in Nineveh. Now, God said he was going to destroy Nineveh, but then the people of Nineveh responded to the preaching of Jonah, and they got right, and so God rolled back that judgment. But he still kept his promise, because in the book of Nahum, Nineveh does get destroyed. So he says he's going to destroy them, and Jonah, they respond properly to the preaching, and so then God rolls back that judgment, but eventually it comes. So lesson number one I see is that God will punish evil. Now, he can roll back the punishment. Uh, he can repent of doing it in a particular generation, but God won't let evil just go unchecked. Forget about it. He's going to punish evil. He will always do that, especially in a secular sense, dealing with nations. Right now, God's dealing with individuals in the dispensation we're in. God's dealing with individuals. An individual can get saved and get under the blood and no longer be in a place of condemnation. But as far as nations and political powers go, God's not going to let them commit wickedness and get away with it. I mean, it's a bad testimony towards him. If there's a God, why doesn't he punish these, these evil rulers and, and evil societies? Eventually, he will. Now, the second, the second lesson is the prophetical side of it. Okay, this pictures the Antichrist kingdom and the destruction of it, which is what's going to happen. See, so Jonah goes and preaches to these people in Nineveh, right? God's set to destroy them. But then God gives them a space uh, as a result of responding to the gospel, right? So Jonah was like a picture of Christ going down and coming up and then and coming back out from hell. And so Jesus died and he rose again. Now we're in the time of the Gentiles. We're in the dispensation of grace. There's, there's still space for man to, to repent and be saved by a, a faith alone, faith by grace system and no works. We're still in that period. But eventually, uh, Jesus is going to come back and he's going to destroy the kingdom of the Antichrist. And so I think Nineveh is a picture of that, that this world, which will be the Antichrist kingdom, is still in a space of grace, a space where they can repent. But eventually that's going to come to an end, the church is going to be raptured out, and then the tribulation will happen, and then the Antichrist kingdom, like Nineveh, will be destroyed. And I just want to read a little bit here, because this kind of gives you the picture of Nineveh as a type of mystery Babylon, which shows up again in the book of Revelation. Listen to this. It says in Nahum chapter 3 and verse number 4, 
Speaking of Nineveh, it says, Because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcrafts, behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will discover thy skirts upon thy face, and I will show the nations thy nakedness and the kingdoms thy shame, and I will cast abominable filth upon thee and make thee vile and will set thee as a gazing stock. And it shall come to pass that all they that look upon thee shall flee from thee and say, Nineveh is laid waste. Who will bemoan her? Whence shall I seek comforters for thee? And then in Revelation, like I said, in, in chapter 17, verse 5, it says, And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And then verse 18 of that chapter says, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city. So they're both cities. They're both harlots. They're both alike in the women. It says, Which reigneth over the kings of the earth. So the world is interested in this city. And then in, verse, uh, num or in chapter number 18 of Revelation, it talks about uh, her sins reaching up to heaven. And God remembers the iniquities, right? That was one lesson we, we talked about already, is that God will remember the evil and he will punish that evil eventually he's going to punish that evil eventually and and then in verse number uh 18 of chapter 18 of revelation it says and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning so, or let's go to verse 17 for in one hour so great riches is come to naught and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour she is made desolate. In one hour she is made desolate. And so we can see the connections there between Nineveh and Book of Nahum and Jonah. And this whore, this harlot, spoken of in Revelation chapter 17 and 18. So God's book flows very well together. And uh, we see that prophetical support even here in this minor prophet of Nahum. So if you never got anything out of Nahum, hopefully now you've, you've gotten something out of it.